Well, hi, fellow brothers and sisters in the family of God. In the family of God. Isn't that awesome how God has children? And we're his children and all that. And I'm really trying to get to know him better and know our Savior better. And so hello again, everyone. You probably are all aware that the Bible several times says things like, we must pray without ceasing. That's in 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Pray always. I'll read those shortly and others with it in the scriptures. Hasn't that intrigued you? Pray always. Pray without ceasing. You have other things to do. You've got to go to work. You've got to get up. You've got to shower. You've got to get, get, get ready for work. Go to work. You have chores around the house. When you get back, you have shopping to do. You have laundry to do. You have uh, yard work to do. You have kids to attend to. You have baseball games and whatnot to go to with your kids as they, you know, for their games. How can we possibly pray without ceasing? Well, listen carefully because I think I have an idea here that might help. And uh, I like praying to my father. I like praying to Jesus Christ. Uh, even Stephen did. Remember when he was being stoned, he said something about Lord Jesus uh, receive my spirit or something like that in the end of Acts 7. So he was praying to Jesus as well. And mostly I pray to the Father. Jesus, Jesus did tell us, when you pray, say our Father in heaven. But it uh, doesn't mean we can't pray to him as well. He's also God. Some of you admit you find it hard to pray. You just do. You've said you don't know what to say after a few minutes. Uh, so I think this talk will help those of you who are in that situation. On top of all that, we find ourselves constantly having to fight set temptations and sin. I hope you're fighting them. I hope I am. And constantly trying to find ways to do good, to do the right thing, to live obediently, righteously, in a holy way, set apart way. Holy meaning different and set apart. But our adversary is constantly trying to distract us, isn't he? He's trying to tempt us to look at the allure of sin. Uh, like it says in Hebrews 11 about Moses, despise the pleasures of sin for a moment. Anyway, so he and his throng of evil angels, or bad angels, are trying to tempt us, trying to get us distracted. How do we fight him? Well, hopefully we have the Holy Spirit. And uh, how do we harness that, though? But we should be remembering that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. So God the Father, Jesus Christ, are in us. Their presence is, is, is in us by the Holy Spirit. So um, in the first half, I'm going to be talking soon about what is the Holy Spirit exactly. Soon. Uh, we hear a lot of things about what it does and so forth, but what is the Holy Spirit? Anyway, in the first half of 2023 sermons, um, you probably heard me refer several times to something called constant contact. And I'm finding that it works phenomenally, phenomenally well for me when I do it. If I go even half a day without doing it, I start seeing the slippage happening in my spiritual life. Sometimes I do forget to do it because it's a relatively new concept for me. Uh, it's not perfect uh, because I'm still developing it, and, but it's notably uh, working. It works when I do it faithfully. I have called it constant contact. And it's about how it's helping me walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5.16 says, If we walk in the Spirit, we shall not do the works of the flesh. So I could really... I want to walk in the Spirit. You'll find this constant contact is something that will help you. Paul tells us, um, he all, anyway, I'll, I'll do another talk this year with more detail about walking in the Spirit and even praying in the Spirit, as Paul says. Uh, supplications, uh, prayers in the Spirit. But today I just want to explain and clarify what I mean by constant contact. Some of you have asked me to clarify, so here it is. Some of you will feel you've been doing this already all your lives. Now, I have been throughout the day, here and there, most days, saying something to God, but not in the concept of constant contact. So this will be what's different. 
1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 18, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. That is so hard to do. Boy, when I my finger was hurt real bad, I, I found it hard to say thank you for this wounded, hurting, swollen, red finger, infected finger. <laughs> for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In Luke 18, Yeshua spoke a parable, Jesus did, that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. And then he gives the story, the parable about this in a certain city, a judge who didn't fear God nor regard man and how this persistent widow kept coming to him. Ought always to pray, don't give up. Luke 21, 36. Watch therefore, pray always, that you may be counted worthy to escape. All these horrible things it just tells us about in Luke 21, which is the comparable chapter to Matthew 24. That you may be counted worthy to escape all these things which will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Anyway, so we have all, we have all these other things that we have to be doing all our lives, it, with our life. How do we pray without ceasing? And how do we pray constantly, always? This is where the constant contact program comes in. I found myself last year not nearly as close and as strong spiritually as I felt I should be as a child of God, as a minister, as a person, as a man, as a husband. And it scared me. Our time for salvation, to win or to lose, is right now. Those of you who have been called now, listen. This is your only chance, folks, this lifetime. If God has opened your mind, has called you to his truth, has worked with you, especially if he's given you the Holy Spirit, this is our chance at eternal life, and we better really make the most of it. We'll, re we'll be rewarded by our works. So let's explain and define constant contact. So at the end of the year last year, 2022, I set aside a day to fast and seek God deeply connected to this constant contact thing. And that's also when I started this constant contact. And I've got to say, when I do it, it's like walking in the spirit all day. And I've found when I do it consistently and correctly, my thoughts and my actions are much more godly, much more righteous, much more victorious. If I let just even half a day go, of not doing it. I'm back to stronger temptations and so on. So that's why I say it's really an important working program that works for me at least. So hallelujah, praise God, to His glory and honor. So it started with fasting and repentance and much more contact with God. In fact, it was with the repentance I was doing where those two-part sermons I've recently given in May of 2023 on God's call to repentance, God's, God's calling us to true repentance. That's where those sermons had their genesis. So here's what it is. I try daily, constant, constant contact, what it is, to make frequent or even constant contact with God and Jesus Christ in short, in short bursts of prayer, bursts of prayer, short prayers throughout the day all day long until I'm back in bed that night. I mean to easily shoot for at least at least 10 and maybe 20, 25, or 30 times a day. I don't mean long prayers. I mean, long prayers, I think, in some ways are overrated. And those of you who lead prayers in church, remember that you're not there to impress anybody. And I've done that too. When I lead prayers in church in the past, you know, you want to say the right things. And so they tend to be longer. Some of the most effective prayers in all the Bible were fervent prayers, but were short. Father, I thank you that you've heard me, is the prayer Jesus said before calling out Lazarus. Elijah's prayer, I timed it one time in English at least, and sure, they, they may be summaries of what were said, but I think Elijah's prayer, what is that, First Kings 18, I think it is? 
probably just a matter of 20 seconds, 30 seconds. So, but I, I, when I'm talking about constant contact, short bursts of prayer, I'm not talking about the longer prayers that we do on our knees, by our bed, or face down on the carpet, morning and evening. Constant contact does not replace those longer, more formal prayers, which I hope you're doing daily. Constant contact is throughout the day, short bursts of prayers that are only usually a minute, two minutes, maybe three, if it's a long, short burst. If you were beside me, you'd think I was talking to myself, whispering to myself. Even if you're at work, when you take breaks, you could do this. Or sitting at your desk, waiting for a meeting to start. Or driving your truck. If you're a truck driver, turn the noise off, the radio, and just talk to God briefly for a couple minutes before you turn your radio back on. If you're gardening, if you're doing dishes, these are times you can have a one or two minute chat with God. So that's what it is. Many short bursts of prayers throughout the day. Some of you are thinking, hey, I've been doing that for years. Well, that's great. That's wonderful. If you, But if you're only doing it two or three or four times a day, that's not constant contact, in my opinion. I've done that too, where I talk to God in short prayers once, twice, three times a day. But now instead of random, haphazard praying and talking to Father, now it's part of a program to keep me attached to Him. So here are a few examples of what I say. Some of you have said you have a hard time thinking of what to say. You may want to print this off. There's several pages here, not, not many just to give you a guideline <clears throat> or some ideas. So uh, I, hope, I hope that would help. Now, why do we need this constant contact? Well, John 15, verses 1 to 8, there, and I've spoken on this recently, without Jesus or Yeshua living his resurrection life in us, and without us abiding in Christ, we can do nothing, nothing. If we do abide in him, we will bear much fruit. Let me just read a couple of the verses in here from John 15, 1 to 8. I'll put all of them in the notes. I am the true vine, Jesus speaking, and my father is the vine dresser. Jump into verse 4. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you bear any fruit unless you abide in me. So what does abiding in him mean? I think constant contact is a big part of it. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. And if you don't abide in me, you're cast out as a branch and withered, gathered up, thrown into the fire, and are burned. Verse 6. Then sound good. God is glorified, verse 8, when we bear much fruit, proving we're his disciples. I'm paraphrasing some of that. So I've discussed this many times. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches attached to him, attached to the vine that he is. If we abide with him, stay fully attached to him, we shall bear much fruit. So I think it's very, very important that we stay attached. I think constant contact is a wonderful way to do that. Do you remember how often we can read about Yeshua getting up early while it was still dark? I think one verse says, God getting up early and, and going to pray. Because he tells us in John 5, 19, that even he himself could do nothing without the Father. Nothing. So he kept that contact up a lot, constantly. Or the time he told his disciples, you go on across the lake, Sea of Galilee, the, the Lake of Galilee, and um, I'll catch up with you later. I'll walk on the water. <laughs> but anyway, Jesus set the example of lots of prayer. If our fruit is bad, you shall know a tree by its fruit. Honestly, if you're honest with yourself, think about what I'm about to say here. Some of you are great fathers, husbands, grandfathers, 
great brothers and whatever, sisters. But compared to God, our fruit is bad. We might have a good marriage overall, but there's still bad things. So we need to let the self die and ask to be grafted onto the true vine of Yeshua. He is perfect. We have to make the tree good. Matthew 12, 33. Either make the tree good or make it bad. He says either make it good or make it bad. So we make it good by asking him to graft us back into him. I know about Romans is it 11, where it talks about being grafted into Israel. Ultimately, it's being grafted into Christ. Another thing you can pray about are new lives in Christ. Or the reason, I mean, these are reasons why we need to do this. The first one was to abide in Christ. Constant contact's a great way. Another point, our new lives in Christ are not supposed to be just trying to fix up and repair our old nature, but to replace it. Replace it with the new life of Jesus Christ, like we've used many times, Galatians 2.20, Colossians 3. To do that, we have to be in contact a lot with him. Another one, if we walk in the Spirit, we won't, we won't be desi desiring the things of the flesh as much. Uh, we, hopefully we'll get at least to the point where P uh, Paul would say, that which I hate, I still do. But honestly, most of us think, I think we still like some kinds of sins too much. Whether it's things that we're watching on computer or TV that we shouldn't be or whether it's getting drunk, or whether it's letting a, a sexual temptation go a little farther than it, or a lot further than it should. We're still liking sin too much. So we need to have this constant contact and have Jesus' mind in us. We have to have God's own divine nature at work. Second Peter 1, 4, the Holy Spirit is God in us. It's God in us. And imparting to us his very own nature. Hear my sermon on what is the Holy Spirit. Our task is to activate God in us, open the door to God in us, God's nature in us, activate it. So what do I bring up in these short bursts of prayers? What do I say? What do I talk about? Some of you have told me you really would wonder what on earth you would do talking to God that many times. So I'll give you some ideas. Most of you, I think, probably are fine with this, but here are some ideas. I like to give thanks and praise for all things, even the things that seem bad, knowing that God is already working behind the scenes to make it work out for good, whether it was selling Joseph into captivity. It took many years before you saw the good out of it. Or Moses fleeing for 40 years. He's now 80 by the time he went back to Egypt. God was working something good. So everything works together for good, right? Romans 8, 28. We all know that verse. At times of great pain, though, we a lot of times, when we're honest with ourselves, don't really like the verse so much. We don't want people telling us, oh, don't worry that your son got run over and killed. All things work together for good. I personally wouldn't use that verse at that moment. Let the person come to it. Let the person come to it in their time. Anyway, I thank God for Jesus Christ, dying for my sins, living for my eternal life. Uh, Romans 5.10, when he was resurrected, his life saves us. We're forgiven by his death, by his blood, but we're saved by his life. Romans 5.10, I have a couple sermons on that. I praise him for the Holy Spirit. I ask him for more, always for more. I forget where that is now. I think it's in Matthew 7. But it says that when God won't, God, God loves to hear, hear you ask for more of the Holy Spirit, and he'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. I thank him. It's the time to thank. Thank him for my wife, my family, my kids, my grandkids. Thank him for my friends. I thank him for all of you. I thank him for the birds and the flowers and the beautiful sky, the clouds, and for the rain and for the sunshine. It's just a time to thank God. You're looking at your house. Thank God for your house. 
You're looking at your kids. Thank God for your kids and do a little short burst prayer in your mind and or quietly and just say, I hope you, you, you will call them, Father, and give them your Holy Spirit as they come into teenage years and 20s and 30s, that they will be your children. I'm glad to raise them for you, but help me, Father. Okay, that's, that's a short burst. I do supplication prayer. Here's another one, asking for God's mercy and healing for you, many of you, throughout the day. Some of you get mentioned five or six times a day. I hope you're doing it for me, too, in my issues. Some of you need jobs, need money, want a spouse, or whatever. As I'm becoming aware of these things, I pray for you in short bursts. Rather than this big, long, 45-minute prayer by my bed, and sometimes some of you will fall asleep, sometimes I've fallen asleep. It, it gets, it gets, it's hardly a fervent prayer, right? And so the short bursts of prayer, again, remembering some of the most effective prayers were short. Remember the latest scenes at the end of Revelation 3 and how we find Jesus outside knocking on his door. He's the door, and he's urging them to let him in. What's he doing outside? So many of my bursts of prayer, I'm saying, Yeshua, please come into my life. Be my life. I'm opening the door of my heart to you. Please come in. Please speak to me. Let me hear you when you speak. Guide me, rebuke me when I'm heading the wrong way. Please open doors, shut doors, according to your will. Please teach me how to make you the Lord and Savior of my life. Please teach me how to unconditionally surrender everything to you. Come into my life. Help me be more zealous for you. Okay, that's a short burst prayer. Another one. Of course, I'd hope we frequently pray for more wisdom, more understanding, more of the Holy Spirit to guide us and speak to us. Yeshua recommended that. Remember Luke eleven thirteen. Pray for the Holy Spirit. You'll get it, he said. Also ask for Jesus to help you find him, to find him, Jesus, to come to know him like Paul said. Let God see you are diligently seeking him and want to find him. Those who diligently seek after me will find me. Use that prayer in a short burst. Claim the process that whoever diligently seeks after God will find him. Father, I'm doing it. I'm seeking you with all my being. Help me be more zealous even. I think constant contact does that very thing. Here's another one. A whole bunch more coming. So, Sometimes my constant contact prayers are pleas for my Savior to continue to save me to continue to save me, to help me beat temptations I'm feeling. Jesus is not just our Savior once, but every day. Let me say that again. Jesus is not our Savior just one time on the cross, but every day by the cross and the resurrection we're saved by his life. He was tempted in all things yet without sin. Hebrews 4.15. Sometimes in my short burst, I'll just look up and I whisper up and I'll just say, Jesus, how did you do that? Tempted, tested in everything. You never sinned. That means he was tempted to steal. He was tempted to lie. Does not mean he wanted to? And you know good and well that Satan and the demons would be doing everything they could to throw everything at him his entire life, especially on the cross, especially during and after Gethsemane and the scourging and the crucifixion. One sin is all it would have taken. So I tell God what I'm going through. He already knows, but how much I desperately need him to help me to get through this. I'm, sometimes I'll admit I, some temptations are... I'm feeling them too strongly. I shouldn't be feeling them this strongly. Why am I feeling them this strongly? Help me. Help me, Father. Help me, Jesus. Sometimes the short prayers are very heart-wrenching, as I don't want to sin. So, but if you want to do a particular sin, it's going to be hard to pray, help me overcome this temptation. 
to get back on drugs or to lie to my wife or to flirt with the women at work or whatever if you want to but that's the time you need to pray father I don't my spirit side doesn't want to do this why am I please help me strengthen me I find I get a lot of strength when I do this 20 30 times a day if I do it five or six or seven times a day not enough not enough remember we don't fight against flesh and blood but spirits in high places Paul reminds us of that in Ephesians 6, 12, just before he talks about putting on the armor of God. Sometimes I even say, Father, Jesus, if the adversary and his evil spirits in high places are trying to make me fall into sin, please, in Jesus' name, rebuke them. Keep them away. Give me the victory in Yeshua. O commander of the armies of the Lord of hosts, help me. Ask for help. Ask for any help you get a break. more ideas my constant contacts with God include many times of repentance including if I realize I've gone too far with a temptation and it's turned into a sin in other words you might be tempted by a woman or a man um, it the temptation is not the sin but it depends how far you take it where when does it actually become adultery in the heart adultery taking place in the heart even if you do nothing physically Remember, Jesus was tempted and tried in everything, yet without sin. So we can go to him. But if we go too far with a the temptation, then the thoughts can become sin. Father, deliver me from the evil one. Give me the power to defeat all wrong in me. Then I go on to other things. Then I come back again, maybe a few minutes later if you, or an hour later. I pray for all the pastors and brethren in Africa that I'm working with and wherever else God is bringing people through light on the rock or other venues that some of you know about and I ask him to bless my webmaster Scott and Brandy Doucette worked so many countless hours getting this all out to you it's not just me I prepare the sermons I record them but getting them online takes so much time and so I ask God to bless him too and bless all of you whoever send in any donations we do appreciate that so much we need them so badly uh, we only have a handful of uh, people who do donate I'd love to see more but it's up to you it's up to you I know that I know the principle in the New Testament is if you're being fed by the gospel you should support the gospel so if you're being fed by light on the rock I hope more and more of you will think about sending something in if you don't that's fine too glad to help you with this information God bless you all whether you do or not I pray also for God's intervention and problems in my life I thank him for, in advance for his answers I know he's already working behind the scenes long before I'm aware of it so when I ask for relief from pain that I might have for example there's a story of Jesus cursing the fig tree that had no ripe figs on it. And in one of the accounts it says, when you pray, believe that you have already received what you're praying for, or asking about. Believe you've already received the answer. So I'm trying to do that more and more too. I've talked about that for years, but it's hard to really do that when you have a problem and you don't see it changing. In fact, you see it getting worse sometimes. That's the truth, isn't it? But no, he's working behind the scenes. Another short burst. I ask for more gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. The greatest gift of the Holy Spirit is what? Do you know? What's the greatest gift of the Holy Spirit? It's love. Faith, hope, charity. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love he's talking about the the gifts of the Spirit and then we also talk about the fruit of the Spirit again love is in there so I'm trying to learn more and more to say father in heaven instead of asking for a gift of uh, I don't know uh, let's say miracles or better preaching or better prophesying or the gift of prophecy or 
the gift of tongues or interpreting tongues. Jesus said the greatest gift is love. Do you pray, Father, I'd love to have the gift of a lot of love. Or do you, especially if you're a minister, do you pray more often for miracles and healing, speaking in tongues, all the things that would be so impressive and make people think you must be something really special? Be careful. It's not about you. It's not about me. So pray for more love. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 14, the very next verses after the greatest of these is love, he says it's even better if you're a speaker in church to prophesy or to plain English just to speak, to preach, prophesy, whatever. That's better than speaking in a tongue that nobody can understand, he says. I'm not putting down tongues. I'm just saying, and I think maybe we need to understand that some more. In Acts 2, they were definitely hearing and speaking in local languages all around the Middle East. But after that, you do find that, that they weren't hearing it in their own local tongue after that. They needed interpreters. Anyway, um, that's a different subject. Another point, sometimes my constant contact moment might simply be reciting the Lord's Prayer. I know it's just a model prayer. I don't try to do the same prayer over and over like that. I just, but once in a while, I'll just go through it. Father, our Father, it's not just my Father. He's our Father because God's got a family. The word our implies that right there. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, special, holy, sanctified is your name. And all that your name stands for and means. I say Yehovah. Some of you say Yahweh. Whatever. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Here on earth as it is in heaven. Because it's not always done here on earth. If you don't believe me, go to the search bar and type in God's will. Or will of God. God's will or will of God, depending on how we put it in there. Is, that, is God's will always done? It's best to just type in a, a word or two. And you'll find that, like when he was lamenting Jerusalem at the end of Matthew 23, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I would have brought you under my wings like a mother hen does its chicks, but you would not. I, my will was to do it. And there's also a verse in Luke where it says the Pharisees, did not do God's will for them to be baptized for, by John the Baptist. God wanted the Pharisees baptized by John the Baptist. That was his will, but it says they did not fulfill God's will. So that's why we have to pray that in the prayer. Your will be done on earth like it is in heaven. Anyway, so I'm just saying, I'm not trying to sermon on the Lord's Prayer. I'm just saying, Sometimes just try different things. Maybe something you're reading. Just take it outside or take it in the lanai or where, whatever, your couch or someplace. And just in a short burst of prayer, read something to God. And say, God, this what I've just read really speaks to me. Let it go deep inside of me, Father. Thank you for letting me see this, whatever this is that you're reading. Sometimes I put on, if I'm not in the best of moods or not as spiritual feeling as I should be, I'll put on some praise and worship songs. Some of those songs, they're not even in our church. <laughs> well, maybe they are. But my point is, God's church, my point is some of those songs are just so deep. And they put you in the right mood. I ask for help with sermons and blogs that I'm working on for you. And I hope some of you pray for my inspiration too. I pray for my children and loved ones, that they may have a walk with Christ, that they may be saved. They've got the hiccups all of a sudden, so I'm not trying to be rude to you. <laughs> so anyway, I pray for my children, their protection, that they will have a walk with God, with you, God, that, that you will call them to a wonderful relationship with you. Um, and I hope he does. 
I pray for their protection physically, spiritually. I pray they're protected as they drive, as they walk, as they're in class, wherever they are. I pray they're safe from evildoers, violent people. I pray for Jerusalem. You know, there are verses that say, pray, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You know, just a few days ago from when I'm recording this, over 800 rockets, missiles, <clears throat> were fired into Israel. 800. Luckily, what they call Iron Dome took out 95 or 96 percent of them. But eventually, Israel's going to run out of missiles, especially if we don't resupply them and help them. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I also ask God to help me to live more in his will, not mine. First Peter 4, verses 1 and 2, I might say, Lord, you are holy. Peter tells us to be holy, for you are holy. Please help me be holy and live according to your will. Be set apart for your use, to be different. So I could go on and on, but basically, really, if you want a thousand, if you want a million ideas, you can take points of Scripture. And something speaks to you in Scripture. Uh, to pray for, for example, to pray for the uh, leaders of our country. They need it. You may not feel they're even worth honoring. It says to pray for them. And it says to honor the king, honor those in power. Honor them. Whether you feel they deserve it or not, their office certainly does. And God tells us to. I could go on and on, but especially those of you who struggle with what to say, maybe print them out, print these out, and use scriptures. I hope you're studying the Bible every day and, and uh, at least listen to the Bible audio if you're driving or things like that. Uh, or if I'm getting ready for bed, I'll put the audio, Bible audio on. And I'll, I'll listen to the same chapter two or three times before I go to the next chapter. Because I want to make sure I got it all, especially if I'm doing something else as well. If I'm double, um, what's the word, I'm working two things at once. Anyway, so you get the idea, I'm sure. I'm finding it very, very effective in battling wrong thoughts and temptations. If I just do it, and I mean more than seven or eight times, I mean 10, 12, 20, 30 times, 30 times, 20 times at least, if I'm doing that, I'm finding I'm not nearly as tempted as before if I kept, before I kept uh, doing the constant contact program. I find I'm stronger on, on those days. I find I'm happier. I find temptations are way, way down. The spirit's willing, the flesh is weak, so I want to conquer the flesh by having this constant contact with God the Father and Jesus Christ. Anyway, I hope that helps. This means making a lot of those short bursts of prayer at least 10 times a day, shoot for 20 or more, maybe 30. Just one or two minute short bursts. First Thessalonians 5:17. Pray without ceasing and everything give thanks. And um, men ought always to pray and not lose heart. Luke 18, remember the prodigal... I mean, the importunate, the persistent widow. I pray that you always, pray always that you be counted worthy to escape the things that are going to come to pass. Boy, I hope that's a prayer you're praying many, many times. That's a constant contact kind of prayer every day. Father in heaven, I'm not a brave guy. I don't want to be in the great tribulation. I want to be counted worthy to escape these things. Please, will you count me and my wife and my kids, my grandkids, and all in my family and those that I love in our church. Help us all, as part of your body, be counted worthy to escape. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. So I hope that helps all of you in seeking diligently after our God. Constant contact program. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I pray that this message has resounded with many who hear it. I pray we will all implement it, seeking you all throughout the day. I pray that you will guide our prayers. You will give us thoughts. You will even tell us what to pray about. Thank you, dear Father. And we thank you that we can talk to you. That one word, when we say Father, the busiest, most powerful, most incredible being in the whole universe, the Father of our love, Father who is love, 
And Jesus, your son, can immediately be aware of us. Anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, middle of the night, middle of the morning, we can do a constant contact with you. As we lay down, put our heads on the pillow, we can do a constant contact with you. Please honor these, Father, and bless our efforts to find you, to seek you, to make you the center of our life, Father. We ask Jesus, please be our life. We open the door to you. We invite you in. We don't want to be Laodiceans. We want to be zealous. We want to be active. Please come into our life, dear Lord. Now, Father, we ask you to continue watching over us as we sign off here. We love you with all our being. We pray we'll love you more. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Help us to be overcomers. Help us to defeat Satan. Help us be stronger than we've ever been. <clears throat> Forgive us the days we're not strong, Father. Forgive us our sins and let us go on and not be in the dumps forever over even terrible sins, but to be willing and able to forgive ourselves also, including me, Father. We thank you. We love you. We thank you, Jesus, too. In your name, dear Jesus. Amen.